But nowadays, the media and its audience is addicted to celebrity, and they'll do just about anything to get their hit. Even if it means rolling out the red carpet to those ever more powerful emissaries, the brand ambassador. Well, now she's making her debut on the runway as the face of Target Women's Fashion. Jessica Malboy joins us, folks. Big round of applause. <laughs> Jess. Hello. Good to see you. I saw you sashaying down that runway. Woohoo! Yeah, working it, girl. <laughs> I was. Yes, Jessica Malboy is Target's new brand ambassador. And it's not only Nine that's been trumpeting the news. Melbourne's Herald Sun, Sydney's Sun Herald, Darwin's NT News, Adelaide's Advertiser and Elle magazine have all been keen to share the story and tell us why Jess is so excited to be on Target. It was really just a very exciting opportunity for me and I thought it would be really exciting for the community as well. It's a product I believe in strongly, so being invited to be part of the Target family meant a lot. Being part of the family is what brand ambassadors are all about. And there are so many families to join. Here's Aussie rapper Iggy Azalea wearing her undies in Brisbane's Sunday Mail and talking about why she is so thrilled to become one of the Bonds. It was something I wanted to be involved with because it's an iconic Australian brand. We grew up seeing who was going to be the next Bonds girl. But ambassadors are everywhere. Here is Model Gem Award in the Sun Herald's Date with Kate having a chat behind a couple of bottles of Coca-Cola Life and being asked... What are you up to at the moment? I'm an ambassador for Coke Life. Great answer. That's exactly what she's paid to say. But not so good here from Danny Minogue. Style ambassador sounds a little bit flash. I love the title. What does being a style ambassador involve? Look, yeah, it's ambassador's a long word. and you know, I'm trying to fulfil that role. Yeah, well, she's not doing so well because Danny's been hired by Westfield and here's me having to tell you that. So, what's this ambassador caper all about? Well, it's to get gratuitous plugs in the media and it works far better than straight ads because we trust editorial and celebrities. Yes, really. But why do the media tag along since the plugs are not paid for? The answer, of course, is they're desperate for the interview and they feel they have no choice. It's an unspoken deal. When the PR gets a call into the producer, they say, would you like to talk to person X? They feel really strongly about this. There's a sort of understanding that the brand will be mentioned, or probably the next call will go to a person who will. Or, as a former magazine features editor puts it rather more bluntly... Celebrities basically never do interviews unless they're plugging something, whether it's a film, book or product. With brand ambassadors, there's usually an understanding or agreement that their product or role as brand ambassador will be mentioned. There's nothing to stop the mag from not doing this, except the publicist will hit the roof and won't offer up their celebrity next time. How explicit the agreement is depends on the journalist, the PR and the publication. But in theory, it works like this. The celebrity is briefed by the brand on what to say in the interview. So, if they are a good ambassador, they will be sure to plug when appropriate. The journalist is also briefed by the PR people for the brand to ensure the brand is well represented in resulting media coverage. And here is the arrangement working a treat with KISS FM's top rating Kyle and Jackie Osho introducing Australia's cricket captain Michael Clarke who has just phoned in. You're the Oral-B ambassador. You're <laughs> leading the quest to reclaim the Nashes. That's clever. Whereupon the Oral-B ambassador and champion cricketer playing the part of the Tooth Fairy tells listeners enthusiastically... I tell you what has changed my life, and it's funny, and don't knock it till you try it. The new power brush, yeah. it honestly, if you use that, it feels like you've been to the dentist. Oh, really? I'm amazed how the, the difference between the power brush and just the standard toothbrush. Wow. Michael Clark likes it. Hmm, I must get one. So, how much does all this diplomacy cost? Well, a recent court case involving Jeep and parent company Fiat Chrysler revealed that soccer star Harry Kuehl was paid $1 million a year to drive a Jeep and take part in six press conferences to plug the brand. You know, it, it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all done by Jeep and uh, it's a company that now I'm working on side because I'm an ambassador for and uh, we're both are putting together a, a grassroots program for Australia to, uh, to help benefit uh, you know, football in Australia. And it wasn't just cash that Harry collected. He also got airfares, school fees and help with his rent. But that little arrangement has not ended well for the brand. Fiat Chrysler says the Kuehl deals were uncommercial and it's now taking the man who signed them, the former boss of Chrysler Australia, to court. And sometimes ambassadors can get far worse publicity than that. 
After all, would you want this man spruiking your paints? British paints cans, Rolf Harris. Or this actor spruiking your slimming product and putting weight back on. Magda Zabanski parts ways with Jenny Craig again. Or, of course, the master of spin wearing your nicotine patches. And we all know what happened to him. Warren stumbles in smoking test. Personally, I'm hoping that Roger Federer screws up as the ambassador for Moet et Chandon. I really do have an affinity for the brand.